you. Our Sanders, I was enrolled at the shelf, but my, I mean the Sanders, my mm -hmm. father's name was Sanders. How come you enrolled at the shelf? My grandfather enrolled me. Mm. Is that his name? Yeah, he's the shelf. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where were you born? Over on Peavine. Where? Over on Peavine. Peavine. Next little community from here. Okay. And when's your birthday? Your <laughs> uh, uh, Nineteenth of January, nineteen hundred and two. Who is your father? James Sanders. Was he born in Peavine also? No, I think he was born down around Proctor. The Sanders were from down around Proctor. Mm -hmm. And who's your mother? Ada. She was Ada Shell before she was married. Mm -hmm. Where's she from? Peavine. Peavine. Mm -hmm. What kind of work did your father do? He was just a laborer. Mm -hmm. What kind of work do you do mainly? Whatever? Whatever it was to do. Mm -hmm. He worked on this, on the Kansas City Southern Railroad, and helped build this bridge down here when we were building it. He worked on that, so. Mm -hmm. And you say your grandfather enrolled you? Yes. What was his name? Toss Shell. Toss? Yeah, let's see. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Mm. I think it's T O S H, I believe, the way it's pronounced. Tosh, Tosh. Is your grandfather born around Peavine? I don't know. Did uh, your great grandparents come over the trail? My great grandmother did on my grandmother's side. What's her name? Susan. Susan Walken Pick. Did you know her? I barely remember her. Did your mother or anyone ever talk about the trail? What happened on the, any incidents? No, I've read a little bit about it when my grandmother, my great grandmother left. I read somewhere about the things that she left when she came, when they brought her over, her farming equipment, her dishes, and the things that she left. Mm -hmm. they, what kind of home they have in, they live in Georgia? Mm -hmm. What kind of home they have there? Uh, just a little log cabin evidently. I, I really don't know. Mm -hmm. but I imagine it's a log cabin probably. How long did it take to get here on the trail? That I don't know. You know which group they came with? Who the leader of their group was? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. Ever hear any stories about Jesse Bushyhead? Well, I've heard the name and a little bit. I, I really, I couldn't tell you anything about it. Yeah. I, about him, I don't know. Mm -hmm. When did you start school? Me? Yeah. Seven years old. Nineteen six, nineteen seven. My mother died when I was a hundred. <laughs> when I was eight years old, uh, probably. Yeah. Where'd you start school? 
Levi. Do you have to name the school? Yeah. Is Peabine still here? Is it still? Yes. How big is Peabine? Or how big was it when you were a child? When I was a child? Yeah. It was a pretty good sized area. And still is. Mm -hmm. Of course, it, it's it's been the now or later in later years it was divided. They called they built another school, which later was called East P Line and then West P Line. Mm -hmm. The East P Line school, when it was built, was just a little one room building, and I guess I I was among the first students that, that went to that little school, and the, the name of it, they called it Fudge. 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 Why Fudge? I don't know. <laughs> I guess they fudged on the other school. I don't know. <laughs> Who was your teacher? Opal Worsham. Opal, let's see. She was a Worsham after she married Garrison. Opal Garrison. She's deceased now. She died not very long ago. She rode a little gray pony from Stillwell out there to teach. What was your favorite subject? Reading, writing, and arithmetic. <laughs> you speak Cherokee? No. Did you folks? My grandfather did. And my mother, well, I, I didn't know my father's dad. He was dead before. Mm -hmm. He died when my father was young. Did, um, when you started the school, were there many white students in the area? White yeah, children? Yeah. Y'all go to school together? Yes. Was, uh... It was predominantly Indian, but there were white, white, white kids there. Opal Garrison, was she Indian? I don't know whether Garrisons were any Indian or not. I don't think so. I really don't. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Was her, there her sons are in Stillwell now? Mm -hmm. Was there any prejudice on the part of the Indians against the whites at that time? Yeah, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I didn't notice it. We just went to school together. Mm -hmm. was, um, in your parents or your grandparents' generation, was there any ill feelings against about the removal? Uh, I never did hear them say. Yeah. They just didn't talk about it? No. As a child, what kind of chores did you do in the farm? I didn't do much. <laughs> How many brothers and sisters did you have? I didn't have any. And only child? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. How come your grandfather enrolled you? Not sure. Well, we lived with him at the time. Mm -hmm. Where were your folks then? Who were my folks? No, where were your folks then? Up on my grandfather's old place, up on P Line. Mm -hmm. How big? Well, was that your grandfather's allotment? Mm -hmm. How many acres did he have? I imagine, I really don't know, probably about 160. Mm -hmm. I've heard that they allotted the land according to the value of it. Well, it the his property was just ordinary hill land. And he farmed, he had corn and oats and wheat and sorghum, cane and stuff like that. Did he make molasses? Uh, I think he did. I'm not sure because there was a, a mill down below the house, and, but I'm not sure whether he did or didn't. Was uh, Hildebrand's mill in operation when you were a child? The big water mill over here? At uh, uh, Summers, or not Summers, but uh, over in Arkansas, you mean? No, here in Oklahoma. Here in Oklahoma? Yeah. 
I think it's also called Burt's Mill. Or Beck's Mill. Beck's Mill. Beck's Mill. Yes, I guess it was because I heard my, my grandfather and them talk about it. Mm -hmm. That he used to take... Uh, but I think that was over at the... Not Beck's Mill. Beck's Mill. Take his wheat and corn over there to have it ground into flour and meal. Is that Beck's Mill over in Arkansas? It's over in Arkansas, that mm -hmm. mill over there. And now there is a Dutch mill to Arkansas. Is that where the mills were? Yeah. I know where it is off over there. Is it Dutch mill? The old water wheel. Part of it's still there. I guess. I really don't yeah. know. Did you, do you remember the Dog Commission coming through, surveying the land? No. That was 1906. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't old enough to remember that. No, I don't remember it. Do you remember statehood day? No. Nope. Way back in the 80s, I don't remember. Were your parents for or against statehood? Your grandfather. I never did hear him say. Mm -hmm. Did you know anyone that attended the Sequoia Convention? Mm -hmm. You familiar with it? Pardon? Are you familiar with it? The Sequoia Convention? Mm -hmm. It was held in Muskogee in 1904, 1905. That's when they got together to. Uh, work up a constitution for the state of Sequoia, Indian Territory, then it become a separate state. What was your question then? Did you know anyone that attended no. the Sequoia Convention? No, I don't remember. No, I can't. Where did you go to high school? I went to government school. I went to Chilocco. Chilocco? Mm -hmm. When did you go? 1916. Who was head of the school then? Mr. Blair. I was looking at the uh, uh, book in there way this morning. One of the uh, men that was in there. Mm -hmm. It's all uh, superintendent, all of them. How many years you attend there? Five. Five years. I graduated there in 1921. Now it's a boarding school, isn't it? Well, I guess you'd call it a boarding school. It, it was a. Uh, you know, it didn't cost you anything to go. That was it was government school. Mm -hmm. I I went to a mission school before that. That was Bright Mission down in Marble City. How long did you go to Bright Mission? About two years. About 1914, 15. About uh, about 1913, 14, somewhere along there. Who was in charge of that Bright Mission? John M. Robe. R-O-B-E. He was a superintendent. Which church back then made it the mission? Presbyterian. Now, did, who did you live with when you went to the church down there? The school, I'm sorry, the right mission. You mean to attend school? Yeah, did you board with someone? We stayed or there at the school. You stayed at the school? At the school. Mm -hmm. Okay, you lived in a dormitory then? Yes. What was dormitory life like at the mission? At that time, it was pretty rough because uh, uh, the only heat we had was down in the, what you might call a living room, and we had no uh, uh, bathroom facilities. We had the outhouses. And uh, the <clears throat> usually there was a, one teacher, one instructor at each table, and uh, there were so many kids at each table, and there was just an instructor at the head of each table. And the instructors usually got a little special food to what we did. Now, who were the instructors? 
the teacher. The teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, how many buildings is made up of schools? Is it just one big building? No. There was uh, our dormitory, and Bill's dormitory, and the dining hall, and the superintendent's room, and the laundry. And uh, where the farm man lives. But the school building burned the year before I went down there. And the year I was there, our building burned, and all I had left was what I had on with my nightgown. Everything I had was burned. How come, how come the building burned? What caused the fire? Well, I imagine from a stove. Mm -hmm. Probably a furnace or something, because we you see we didn't have any heat on the window. Yes. Can you tell me what your average day was like at the Dwight Mission? At Dwight Mission. You know, from the time you got up. Well, from classes. the time we got up, we usually went went to breakfast. And what we time were, did you get up? We were. Mm -hmm. Well, don't remember the hour, but. We, we got up pretty early, and we were assigned certain duties. Like we'd work in the kitchen two, hour, uh, two weeks, and maybe in the building two weeks, and, and in the laundry two weeks. And that's, that was our roping. Mm -hmm. When did, how many hours of class did you have each day? We had just about an all day school, about, about, about the general, probably. Mm -hmm. Probably six hours. Mm -hmm. Which job do you like best at school? At the school? Working the dining room, kitchen, working the laundry, in the building. I suppose in the building. What did you do in the building? Sweep floors, and of course we all we didn't have rugs or anything like it. Like then, everything was just mm -hmm. uh, you know we had to sweep floors. And uh, was this the main school building? No, that was the dormitory. Mm -hmm. The dormitory. But when we worked in the dining room, of course, we washed the dishes and uh, cleaned the dining hall. And, uh, did the usual things. Mm -hmm. On Saturdays, if you, when we worked in the kitchen, we peeled potatoes about all day and fried the uh, potato chips. Mm. The old cook. Miss Matthew was her name, and uh, some of the girls would get tired peeling potatoes. They'd peel them pretty thick, and she'd sit them down and make them peel them through. And <laughs> <laughs> what did your dorm room look like? Well, we just had a bed in our dorm rooms, and uh, in, in some of the rooms, there was only in the room where I was before our building burned, there was one uh, big girl, and there was maybe three, four or three smaller girls, I guess. And, uh, there were five? Yeah, and uh, there were three, four, four or five girls in the room. How big was the room? Yeah. The, the room we were in was probably, it was probably about like this room, maybe. About 14 by 14, maybe something like that. Mm -hmm. Now, did you have closets in your room, or where did you keep your clothes, all your personal items? We didn't have many clothes to keep. <laughs> uh, I, re I guess we had closets. I don't even remember. Mm -hmm. We had usually had a little trunk or, or a similar suitcase or something and kept them that's mostly where we kept them. How many students attended Dwight Mission when you were going there? When I was there? Mm, 
Oh, I'd probably say Sunday during paper. Maybe. Mm. I, I really don't know. But, uh, yeah. What did your meals consist of? Codfish. <laughs> That's where I learned to eat codfish, and I hate them here. <laughs> what did you have for breakfast? We usually had oatmeal. And uh, I don't know whether we knew what toast was or not, but we had oatmeal. And, uh, uh, probably a glass of milk. And lunch? For lunch? We usually have some, probably some kind of meat and gravy or potatoes. Mm -hmm. And supper? Codfish on toast. Where'd you get the codfish from? I don't know where they came from. The, of course, the mission, missionaries, I guess, you know. Well, that's, it, was, it was a mission school. Yeah, see. that's from the Atlantic, I think. Uh, probably. Yeah. Because I know when, when our building burned, there was some of the girls that got out uh, before the building really got on fire too much, and they got big, a lot of their things out. Where we girls that were in the end rooms, we just barely got out with our shirt tails. Mm -hmm. And Anyone hurt in that fire? Not in that fire, but the next year, the boys building burned and they were seven, I believe, seven boys burned up. Which job did you like the least at the school? In the kitchen. Washing dishes? Eating potatoes. <laughs> Who was your favorite teacher at the school? Uh, give me time to think. My favorite uh, was Miss Parker. What she teach? Well, she wasn't well. No, she wasn't a teacher. She was a matron. Oh, she was. Mm -hmm. What was her job? She, she just looked after the girls, saw that they were all, you know, taken care of or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you said that you had big tables that you sat at, and the instructor yeah. was at the end of the table? Yeah. Did you have different rooms for the different classes, or was it all in one room? Well, uh, the school building burned the year before I went down there and we just had classes in, in different rooms, different buildings. Mm -hmm. We learned catechism. And that was a Presbyterian school. Presbyterian mission. Is it still there? Uh, the it's the it isn't isn't a school anymore. They have uh, summer camps there now. How many buildings are still there? There's any of the original buildings left or nothing. Yes, there is. Too. There's one. That I, I was down there two or three years ago, and there's one of the original buildings left. Which one? I guess it would have. Would have been an office building, I guess. I really don't remember what it was. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know it was what we would people would call a breezeway now between the two two rooms. Mm -hmm. We probably called it a hall room. Mm -hmm. People call it people nowadays would call it a breezeway, I suppose. Was this strictly an Indian school? Yes. There was all different tribes. I said all different tribes. There was Creeks, Seminoles, Cherokees, mostly. Did you ever know anyone that went to the uh, female seminary, Cherokee? Mm -hmm. My husband's aunt went there. Did she ever talk about it? Yes. What did she say about it? Well, 
she said that it was well kind of like uh, any other institution I suppose uh, you know they they ate a lot of cornbread and sorghum <laughs> <laughs> was this in the old school it's a talco female okay. seminary no is this the one that she attended was it the old one that burned down or the new one the old one the old one mm -hmm. when did she go there goodness I don't know yeah. what's her name her name was Cleo Duncan her daughters live in Talco now with her daughters You left White Mission, then you went to Shilako. Well, I came home and, and went to school up at, at Fudge about a year before I went to Shilako. I went to Shilako in 1916. How come you went to Shilako? Well, I, my father just decided, I guess, to send me. Mm -hmm. and so I went on the... On the train from here. It was a government school, wasn't it? Yes. Free. Yes. What was life up there like? How did life compare at Shilako with uh, with Dwight the mission, mission? With the Dwight Mission? Mm -hmm. well, it was quite different because at Shilako uh, we wore uniforms, government uniforms, mm -hmm. except on Sunday afternoons if you had any clothes you could wear them, your home clothes. Mm -hmm. But we wore uniforms and uh, we marched wherever we went and we drilled, drilled like soldiers. Hmm. We marched everywhere we went. We marched to school, we marched to the dining hall. We marched, we marched, we marched. Did you have jobs at Chilaco like you did at Dwight Mission? Oh yes, yes. What'd you do? Well, uh, different. You were assigned different uh, uh, duties, like like you worked in the laundry, you worked in the dining room, you worked in the kitchen, you worked in the building. You worked occasionally. Some of the girls that I guess were big enough or whatever worked in the homes of some of the teachers mm -hmm. in the in the hospital. Again, which job did you like the best? That's your life. Like any of them. Let's see. Which one did I like the best? I suppose in the building. How'd you do the laundry? How did we do our laundry? Yeah. We sent it to the laundry. See, we wore uniforms. Mm -hmm. And our uniforms were all, all marked, had your name on them. And they just sent them to the laundry, and you had a cubby hole in the basement of the building, our, our building, and your clothes were in there, put in there. And, and then uh, you had work crews that did the laundry. Yes. Did they have machines to do it by hand? They had uh, machines and some by hand. Are you hot? No. I'm gonna say, if you are, I open the door. Thank you. <clears throat> Did you use a machine or by hand, or both? Uh, I suppose machine. Mm -hmm. Which school do you like best, Dwight Mission or Shilako? I think I like Schlockel best. How come? Well, it was a bigger school and and well, one thing we had uh, our own had clothes to wear. Where was I at the mission? I had clothes already, but then we were poor as Joe's turkey and didn't have too many. 
What the uniforms look like? Our everyday uniforms were the kind of gray chamber, like uh, you, you've seen men's gray chamber shirts. Mm -hmm. our, our dresses were made out for that, the gray, gray chamber. You had to have, wear long sleeves. You had to wear high top shoes that laced up. And you had to wear long handled in the wintertime. And you had to have long socks put up over them. Hmm. And and the dresses were were long. You couldn't wear a short dress. They were they were all of course the same same length because we drilled and our uniforms were all the same length. So would uh... Now you say you marched everywhere. We marched everywhere we went. So it's kind of like a military. I could show you some of that. I was looking at the picture way while ago of the school where we were with the uniforms on. And so our Sunday uniforms were different to our everyday uniforms. How were they different? Uh, they were, we had to. with yellow and uh, dark blue what they call surge then I guess dresses or wool dresses it's uh, made kind of a military style yeah. is it dark blue cake you said yes with yellow with lining? a yellow lining mm -hmm. you still have your uniform no, they were belonged to school. Oh, they belonged to school. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you graduated in nineteen twenty one. Mm -hmm. You went to college. Well, I might say that I went some. I went over to Northeastern some or two, and I took several correspondence courses. When did you go to Northeastern? What year? I should have graduated in twenty one. Uh, must have been North Eastern three time, yeah. What kind of game do you play at school? I wasn't very athletic. Didn't play it on gas. <laughs> Shoot, I was hot. Didn't get warm, did it? Yeah. Hot flash. Mm Did you do any work for the war efforts in World War One? Mm -hmm. Oh, about World War One. Well, I went to school World War One. I was in Florida. Mm -hmm. Did you have any organized war effort at Sulaco? Well, not other than uh, some of our boys. We had parades in some of the buildings. Some of our boys had the army. Did all the boys come back? As far as I know, they did. Mm -hmm. With the flu epidemic of 1918, did it hit Sherlock? Yes. They had about 60. They did. Any of them died? No. What kind of medicine did you use for the flu? 
Yeah, so I drove it, so I could do it with Ida. So that's what they use. Any kind of home remedies or anything? Home remedies? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I was going to ask, when you were a little girl at home and you got sick or bumped or bruised, did your parents have any medicine they'd use on you? Like home remedies? What they, what they use? Well, my, my grandmother on my dad's side was a, she was an herb doctor, more or less. And mm -hmm. Yeah, he was. Mm -hmm. But they just kind of used herbs and didn't care. What kind of medicine did she make? Usually she's kind of a witch or something. What kind of witch did she use? Well, there was one that they call the end in the end in the back. I think. And they use a, a lot of tin roof. leaves hmm. or a poultice of some kind of leaves mm -hmm. a bird or something they make poultice out of that use the bark of the citrus tree and a red oak and a cherry tree to make coffee how do you make coffee they take take the bark the peel the rough part of the bark off and take the in inner part boil it and then if they had honey sweet it with honey they didn't take too sugar does that make good cough medicine yeah hmm. and there was a little plant they called snake root I, I didn't know it was fruit but they used that Did your grandparents ever tell you any stories, Indian stories, about their childhood? Yeah, my grandma used to tell us stories all the time. Do you remember any? Well, they used to talk about witches. <laughs> they did. What did they say about them? And uh, they talked about, about the little man. Kanadi, they called him. Kanadi. 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 Who was he? He was a little man that uh, he was invisible or, or nobody ever saw him. They heard him, but they never did see him. And uh, he would, they say he would make noises and he would warn people of things that were ha going to happen. And uh, the, the tradition yet is among some of the, the family, they more or less kind of take it as a joke, just kidding around. He said, I know a gra I've got a granddaughter in uh, Ohio. And she said to me one time, she said, Granny, when, when you die, can, can I have Kennedy? <laughs> How do you spell his name? I guess it'd be K-A-N-U-T-A. I don't know. K-A-N-U-T-I-E. Where does he live? Where does he live? Yeah. Wherever you are. Be there watching me if any of you. <laughs> Is he good? Yeah. Hmm. He's just a fable, more or less. They be, they believed in him. Yeah, but no one ever sees him. Uh, no. Mm -hmm. hmm. And he warns you about things that yeah. are going to happen. Mm -hmm. What else did your grandmother tell you?
been on my on my dad's side, they used to always be shooting a light, but they I don't know what they were, but they, they just were always shooting lights of some kind that was I don't know whether they were warnings or what I don't know. So they used all these lights dancing along across the hillside. What they were or whether they were, I don't know. Did anyone ever tell you about a creation legend of the Cherokees? Like how the Cherokees. How the Cherokees? Yeah, where they started from. Where they started from. No, I don't think so. Not that I remember. You know what part of Georgia the people lived in? Well, the last thing I know that, I don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where's your allotment? He's out in Washington County. You still have it? No. How much land did you get? 106 acres. Where'd you meet your husband? Down here. Where'd you get married? 1926. What was his name? Tender Duncan. I'm sorry? Tender Duncan. Tender Duncan. Mm -hmm. What kind of work did he do? Well, just you might say he was just a laborer. He, he worked on the highways and they built him the highway and, and uh, gravel hall. When there was a gravel hall over here at, at Barron and uh, farm. Did you raise cotton? No. What kind of crops did you raise mainly? Oh, corn. Did you raise stock, cattle, hay? We had hogs. We didn't necessarily have a big bunch, but we had hogs. We had cows. You butchered your own, your own hogs? We did. What time of year? In the fall, usually about November. Did you work at the kitchen? Yes. What would you do? Well, I would help raise hogs and render the lard. Of course, that's after you butcher when you render the lard. But uh, how do you butcher your hogs from start to finish? How do you do it? You first kill him. How do you kill him? Shoot him with a gun. Mm -hmm. Shoot him in the head with a gun, and then then stab him in the in the throat, bleed him. Then you start him in some hot water. And Break the hair off. Mm -hmm. How long does it take to butcher a hog? Well, it takes quite a while. I wouldn't know just how long, how many hours, but it takes quite a while. Mm -hmm. I know we've butchered four and five at a time. It takes about all day to do that. And did you cut up the meat or did your husband? My husband, my husband did. Mm -hmm. Grind the sausage and a lot of work to it. What did you make the sausage out of? Where did we make it? What what did you make it out of? What part the of the lean sausage? lean scrap meat of the hogs. Mm -hmm. That's the all the trimmings, all the lean parts that you trim off. Did you make head cheese? We did. How do you make it? Well you cook your heads and the heads of your hogs and the feet. And uh, until they It'll come off the bone. And you take your hands and get all those bones out and work it up with your sage and your salt and your pepper. In it and put it in something to mold it. Did you ever eat any? Hmm? No. You never did? Never did. Well, you didn't already like it. Well, I was little. My grandfather used to make it. Oh, he did? Yes. Yeah. But you didn't eat it? No. We always liked it. My grand, my mother didn't like it, so she never did. Oh, she it. didn't make it. She didn't like it. So oh, she didn't like it. She used to until she found out what it's made of. <laughs> well, goodness, uh, after.
after you wash it and scrape it and work on it for a day for hours and hours and hours and then cook it. I don't see anything wrong with it. Oh. Somebody didn't like it. You don't lose anything good. but the squeal. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> How do you render lard? Well, you take the, the fat of your hog and cut it up into small pieces. And it, we, when we rendered lard, when we butchered our hogs, uh, we used a big wash pit out in the yard. And uh, it took your fat up there. Took how, it how long would it take to render the lard? It takes quite a while because you, it, when it gets to a certain stage, you have to kind of wash it. So it won't overcook and spoil. But it takes quite a while. How many gallons of lard can you get from a good size hog? Can you get from one hog? Mm -hmm. Well, it's quite into the size of your hog, you know, how fat it is. You know, you may get a couple gallons from one hog if he's pretty fat. But if he's a pretty good sized hog and he eats quite a bit of fat, you may get more than that. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you stuff? The sausage, the skin. How do you do that? Well, the way we did ours, we just uh, cooked it and put it in fruit jars and pour some lard over it and turned it upside down. You don't feel the jar full of the the lard. That really much mm -hmm. makes it seal up good. Turn your jar upside down so that your lard seals. Seals and keep it that way. Oh, you didn't stuff the skin though. No, you didn't. No. Okay. No. no. Did your husband cure the ham? Cure yes. the meat? Sure did. How did he cure them? Well, you salt, salt each piece. You salt it with. Well, later in later years they got the smoke salt, you know, but for a long, long time you used just just salt. Uh, and uh, salt your salt your meat real good, and stack it in your, on your shelf in your house, smoke house, and let it let it take salt for about six weeks, something like that. Then you wash that salt off and hang it up, and you will have them when you smoke it. How long does it take to smoke a ham? Uh, about a week. Every day, you know, you smoke a little bit every day. So, is it thicker the mainly of the smoker? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure is. Mm -hmm. What about beef? Did you butcher your, your own beef? Well, not until later years. They just we had it with them for the season. Had it there. They made the butcher. Could you um, preserve beef like you did before, like salt it down? I never did. How many kids do you have? Five. Five. How many grandkids? The oldest girl has five. Next girl has three, I think. Next girl has two. Your great grandkids? Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Where were you living in the 1920s? Where did I live? Yeah. In the 1920s? Mm hmm. Well, I was a girl at school in 1921. When I came home, I lived over on Tree Line with my dad. Were there any, I guess I'd call them factories in the area? Oh, well, when I went to, over to college over at Northeastern, yeah. How'd they dress? Well, at that time, the dresses were pretty short. They were above the knee? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you wear those dresses? Oh, sure. Why not? 
Yeah. Are you a flapper? No. Mm-hmm. What is a flapper? The girl for the drink store, I guess. Where'd that name come from? The word flapper. The word flapper? Yeah. Thirsty? I remember when I was at the Black Mission down there, at, at, during that era, they wore hobble skirts. What's a hobble skirt? A skirt that you wear in the wolf skin. Did you wear them? I did, yeah. Hmm. So you just, you just a hobble wear thing. <laughs> yeah. How come they started wearing those? Well, it was style then. How did the depression affect you and your family? Mm, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Had a pretty hard time. You made it through okay? Oh, yeah. They put me through. Okay. What kind of meals did you cook in the, in the depression? Well, we used a lot of beans and peas and a kind of rabbit. Rabbit. And the cook laughed yet about making bean sandwiches and pea sandwiches out of black-eyed peas and, you know, whatever we could get. Of course, we, ra- we raised a lot of, that's what, you know, that was. So you always had plenty of food there? Oh, yeah, we had food. Mm-hmm. I've not been straight and gravy, but we had food. Did your husband work for WTA? One day. One day? Mm-hmm. What did he do? Clean your husband up. <laughs> he went to work one day, he worked one day, and they told him he had too much. How come he had too much? Well, we had no tin and ears and uh, some towels. And that was too much? That was too much. Hmm. What kind of work was he going to do for WTA? Work on road. Did you do any work for the war effort in World War II? Mm-hmm. What'd you do? A war bomb. Around here? Mm-hmm. Where'd you sell them? Where did I sell them? Yeah. Just to the neighbors, people around here. Did you go from house to house or did you have big meetings? Or? No, we didn't have big meetings. Uh-uh. No, we just went from house to house. Okay. Everybody buying? No, not everybody because they were like me. They didn't have enough. How many boys from around here went to World War II? Oh, from around here? Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. And there was a lot of boys that, that's how they, that's how they got their education. As they came back from the war, they went to school, got their education. And stay here. What's your favorite childhood memory? Same as my grandmother. What was her name? Jenny. Jenny? Jenny Shell. Mm-hmm. She was an orphan. That's the first thing I knew. She was born around here? Uh, I, I don't know. I guess she was. I thought she was from here. Was she a full blood? Practically so. Are you full blood? No. Mm-hmm. You're half. Mm-hmm. Let me see. Which half of your family were white? Well, both my dad's side and my mother's side both were, were half. So. Mm-hmm. What kind of game did you play as a child? I rode bushes. And rode bushes. Rode bushes and played in the branches and. What kind of what kind of bushes? <laughs> we just get out in the bushes and get out in the sticks and bend over a bush and have one that's strong enough to go up and down with you and, and we rode we rode the uh, we hunted crawdads. And, and, Played out, out around. Mm-hmm. 
if you, your mother or grandmother, make any, I call them Indian dishes, Indian food. That's strictly Indian. Yeah, my dad had a good What's the strictly? He made it come out too. I mean, bean bread. What's come out too? You don't know? No. Well, you take hickory nuts and crack them. And they had what they call a, a riddle. And you get the finer part of your hickory nut out. And then you beat that in a mortar. Till, the, till they get waxy and they all stick together. Just make, you can make a ball out of it. But it's just one that's waxy, juicy rather. And then you take hominy grits and cook your hominy grits. And when your hominy grits get done, tender, you take these, these hickory nuts, you connect your ball, and take, take boiling water and pour over it. Of course, tear it all up. And, excuse me. Pour boiling water over it. Till it all, all the pulls and whatnot go to the bottom and whatnot. And then pour it into pour this into your corn. I've got so much of all in the freezer in there. I never had it. Pardon? I never had it. You probably wouldn't like it. There's not very many white people that do. Mm -hmm. My son in law, he really, he likes it. He's really crazy about it. Mm -hmm. Where are the dishes that they cook? Well, they dried corn and pumpkin. Mm -hmm. You see, they made bean bread. Mm -hmm. What kind of beans do they use? Brown beans. How would they make bean bread? Take your cornmeal and uh, cook your beans until your beans are done, tender. And then uh, while they're boiling with their juice and everything, while all this is boiling, put it into your meal. And of course, it'll stick together too. And then you take and kind of pat them out into kind of little patties and uh, drop it in boiling water. So are the beans hold them? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. It is good. If you like cornbread. Mm -hmm. I was born and raised on cornbread. Yeah, it, it's good. Uh, we always ate it with, uh, of course, we always had our own home cured meat and everything. We ate it with uh, <laughs> the Indians eat a lot of grease, you know. Ate it with uh, fried meat grease. Fried meat grease. Mm -hmm. It's uh, like where you fry your bacon or whatever, you have grease left over. Yeah. That's what you use to put over your oh, okay. bean bread. Okay. Mm. And like people eat butter these days. Mm -hmm. You eat red eyed gravy. How do you make red eyed gravy? <laughs> fry your ham. And then after your ham gets done, Put just a little bit of water, or you can use cream, and that gets left in your skillet with your brown eyed gravy. What else do you put in it? That's all. You don't put coffee in? No. Some mm -hmm. people put coffee in it. I, I didn't ever eat it with coffee in it. Mm -hmm. I've used uh, cream in it, or milk, or water, either. Mm -hmm. Hmm. What else you want to talk about? Let's talk to him. Tell me some more about the Indians. About the Indians? Yeah. What do you mean? When you were, what kind of house were you raised in? A little room about this big, about big as this. Log? No. Spring? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Where'd you get the wood, lumber, to build it? Was there a sawmill around here? There was a, there were sawmills at that time. Mm -hmm. Do you know who ran them? No, I don't. Well, I think we have a good interview. You going to tell all of it to John Friendly? Mm-hmm. <laughs> was there or close by when they killed Duke Proctor. Hmm. Was this Jenny Shell? No, my, on my dad's side. What was her name? Delilah. Delilah Whitmire. She was Sanders. She was a Whitmire. No, that trial was held at the Whitmire School? Uh-huh. Hmm. Yeah, my, my grandmother was Whitmire. It was an old slew of Whitmire. What'd she say about that incident? She said that uh, when the, this, this killing, of course there was more than him killed, you know, and the little, the house, I don't know how big a house, but in those days they had a, a porch, you know, all the way across the house, and she said there was dead men laying all across that porch. Now was Zeke Proctor killed in that? Uh, she said there was. I, I don't know. Hmm. I've heard her talk about it. Yeah. How many men were killed in that? Altogether? I don't know. I don't remember. I think yeah. it's in Oklahoma history now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are these the uniforms that were blue and yellow? Mm -hmm. Now here's an oldie. That, that was uh, evidently they had a wood cutting. You know, people used to have wood cutting, split, mm -hmm. uh, rail splitting. Now it says Grandpa. Which one's Grandpa? The L.E. Downing? Uh, no, Jeff Phillips. That's uh, my kid's step-grandfather. Mm, okay. Hmm. Where was this taken? Right down towards Adelie. Of course, you don't know where Adelie is, I don't guess, but uh, it was uh, my husband's mother's place. That's where they lived then. How far down the road is Adelie? Adelie, you say? Down towards Adley, it's it's just about a mile down to that house. Of course, the the old house they've rebuilt built onto it, and it doesn't look like the same place, yeah. like most old places anymore. They used to have wood cuttings. Yeah. So they get together and. Yeah, chop just wood? Uh, the people in the community that like uh, they gather up maybe at, at our house one month or whatever, and all, all the men they'd all cut wood and haul it up. Or they'd have rail splittings. Of course, people in those days, you know, used rails, built yeah. their fences out of yeah. rails, right. and they'd all gather up and split rail. Hmm. And they'd have like a wood cutting for wood for the like the fires mm -hmm. for the month. Sure. Hmm. Where's he? Where are the pictures? Oh, I've got a whole bunch of them, but I don't. Now that was my uncle was in the army, World War One. He's dead now. He didn't. He didn't get killed in the war, but and this little cousin that was in World War One, he he's also dead. What was his name? Floyd Adair. Oh, you raised the Adairs. Mm -hmm. This was uh, <laughs> this was me and some of my girlfriends when one summer when I was in with Northeastern down in, in Park. What year was that? I see. Must have 
my lap comes through, so I'm going to grease my paw and my arm there. And I'm going to do some shit. What did you major in at Northeastern? What did you take? Uh, psychology. Psychology. Mm -hmm. Well, I took the, I had to catch up on some math, for one thing. This is my daughter that's in Arizona. She's uh, in person now. Mm -hmm. at the area office in very off in Phoenix. Now this is uh, taken over close to the railroad bridge. Of course, you don't know where that is, but that's one of my, that girl is one of my cousins. What's her name? Janetta Caldwell, and she was a Bulls. Of course, she married. <laughs> that's two of my little granddaughters when they were little. They don't look like that now. Now this is a whole bunch of wee hillbillies when we were all kids, I guess. Hmm. Which one are you? I don't think I'm in that. I don't believe. Crittenden, Crittenden. There's some shells. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of shells, I think. Oh, there he is. Relatives in there. Well, they're all relatives. Yeah. And now this was up to my grandfather's old place. I think when the hollyhocks were in bloom, that was two of my cousins. That was up to my granddad's old place when the mm. hollyhocks were all in bloom. I think. There's my cousin with the donkeys. Joe Crittenden. Mm -hmm. he, that was uh, Larry's dad's brother. That's my youngest daughter when she was little. That's me out in Colorado one summer. That's another cousin. She lives in Oklahoma City now. My grandson lives in Oklahoma City. He's a clerk for the Burlington Northern. What's his name? Clark Massey. You look at call him and tell him you've been over here. Yeah. His name is Clark Massey? Mm hmm Richard Clark Massey. I don't know how I don't know how he's listed with Richard Clark or just Clark. You know where he lives? He lives at on uh Villa. South Villa. That's uh that is my oldest daughter right there. That's the when they graduate from eighth grade. And this is a bunch of uh, Shilako students on the bandstand. Now here's some. Of, here's our uniforms that we had to wear. See how long they are. Mm-hmm. Now these two girls were at Dwight Mission. This one is uh, Minnie Fife. If you and I don't remember that girl's name. Minnie Fife and Katie Fixico were both down there. And if, if you remember, if you've read, they were two of the richest Creek girls that, mm. that there was. Yeah, Minnie Fife and Katie Fixico. Yeah. 
They, land. you know, they school they land. had oil land and they were. I I know I in later years I read about them in the paper, hmm. but they were. That was when I was at Dwight Mission. Which is which? Which is many five? This one. On the left. Mm -hmm. And this is two of the Shilako guys. I was looking at the names of this one. I believe that, I believe his name is Christian Tafoya. That one up there. That's some of the Shilako guys. Hmm. Oh, this is another bunch of we girls who work at the park at Northeastern. Now that's the more of the, uh, I think. Some old uh, Dwight Mason schoolmate. I don't know if I forgot my name. That's my husband, one of his old girlfriends. <laughs> That's some more Shalako boys. One of them is that Felix Rowe. Yeah, Felix Rowe. Uh -huh. This was me again in Colorado coming down the deal down to down the mountain to the Manitou, I believe is the name of the little place. That's some more of my poor little cousins. Wouldn't they don't look like we're one of them here in there. That's weird. See this rain carrying mm -hmm. Joseph. Mm-hmm. Carrie Carrie and Rain are dead, they just uh, Okay. Which is ring on the left? Is that ring? That's ring in the middle? Mm -hmm. This is Joseph, I believe. This is an old boyfriend that was in when he was in the, in the army. Jeff Hill. That's me at Shilako with my had washed my hair. My cousin and my dogs. Now this is my youngest girl. And she loved black cats and she still does. Hmm. Do the Indians have superstitions about black cats and all that? Mm-hmm. What do they say about it? Oh, they just like everyone else. They didn't want a cat running in front of you. They say, now, this is my grandpa. That's my grandpa. Grandpa Shell. Did he come over the trail? No, I don't think so. I know that he was there named out who did. Who was he born? Uh, I really don't, don't know. Now this, well, yeah, that uncle that I showed you, now this is his wife. Of course, he's dead. She's still living and she's 85 years old. Where does she live? She lives up where the old home place used to be. Of course, they tore the, tore the old home down and built another house. That's my aunt. On my mother's side. What's her name? John Anna. John Anna? John Anna. Mm -hmm. yes, that's my cousin that lives in Oklahoma City. I think you saw her when she was a little girl there. Mm -hmm. And this is the, one of the girls at Haskell. My, Three of the girls, my girls went to have. Mm. 
two of them took commercial and one of them had her amateur radio license and finally decided she get married. Now that's the boy I showed you a while ago that's in the army with his two boys mm -hmm. on his award course. This is over at Fort Gibson, the girls, the graduating class, the kids at Fort Gibson. Did you ever hear anything about the Battle of Claremont Mound? The big Osage and Cherokee battle? No. I might have read it in history. Hmm. Now that's some more Sherlock old kids. This is me. I think when I'd won something on something I'd canned or something in, in the home demonstration club. Mm. Has an old tin type. That's my that's my dad's mother and, and dad. What are their names? His name was Dave, and her name was Delilah. Delilah Whitmire. I told you she was Whitmire, you know. So these are your grandparents? Uh-huh. Mm they born around here? I imagine. I really don't know, but they they owned land down around uh, on the other down around Christie, off down in there. They had a lot a lot of land down in there. And after he died, well, she sold the property down there and bought over on Peavine. Mm -hmm. that, oh, that's the same one you saw all the group. Yeah. That class over it. Mm -hmm. This is the girl that's in Arizona. I think this is a bunch of school kids. One of my kids were in school, I believe. That's my youngest daughter <laughs> with her long curls. Mm -hmm. Here, those kids are in the stockade over at the Fort Gibson. Great graduation. Same bunch of you girls down at the park at over at South Wall. That's been a friend, a lady that lives down there. That's, I see. Yeah, that's my husband and our oldest, that's when our, we had our oldest baby. And this is his uh, foster sister, and that's his stepdad. Mm -hmm. That's the same bunch of graduates there. Up. What was his name again? Taiski, George Taiski. Was he full blood? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Where did he live? He lived here at Barron. He did. Mm-hmm. Was this he just a farmer in the area, or what? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And this was uh, my husband's uncle, Clint, Clint Duncan. He was guard over at uh, Talco. At Calvert and Calister, 
later. Of course, he was at this wood cutting then. They were all trying to farm a little bit and whatnot then. What year was that picture taken? Where was it taken? Uh, where and when? Goodness, it must have been taken. My husband there looks like he was just about what? About uh, 10, about 10 years old? Yeah. So he was, he was uh, I was from January to December older than him. So I'm 81. Ah, uh, I see, he was born in 1902. In 1912 then? Probably somewhere mm -hmm. around there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was taken around here? Yeah, right down the road here. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, the house is all different now. It's, yeah. it's, it's been built onto and whatnot. I think I smell our coffee. Hmm. Yeah. Do you, do you speak Cherokee? Me? Yeah. No, but oh. I wish I did. I wish I did. My dad didn't speak it. He could understand it, but he didn't speak it. Do you understand it? Some. Not. Not really, not enough to really say I, I do. <laughs> that, no problem. Who had the first car in Barron? Frank Howard. What kind of car was it? Ford, I think, if I remember right. How big was Barron? At its biggest? At its biggest? Yeah. Well, there was two stores, post office, a depot. And, uh, later on, they had a little central telephone office. You mean the population? Yeah. I, I don't have any idea, really. The Frank Howard ran the store over there, and the post office was in the store. His wife ran the uh, post office. And it was just a general store. You'd get everything from soup to hay. Was there a bank in there? Mm -mm, no. The nearest bank was it still on West End. What was Barron named after? I read that somewhere not long ago. I'm sure I let's see, I saw a piece this morning that some lady had written this year on the white call. A lot of her writings are not accurate. About Barron. I I couldn't tell you. I don't know. This is the boy that's in Hawaii when he was. No. What you do for him? I worked as a secretary treasurer. And it was the Indian. Uh, Indian Credit Association. Oh, what they do? Made loans and and. Uh, Collected money and collected they, they made loans to build houses, buy cattle and drill wells and whatever. Small businesses. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Hmm. 